Hey everybody, Sam Seiden here. And I saw someone, uh, Kenny, asking about the S&P. Yeah, you know, we are hitting, uh, we did reach that, I believe, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but the that 1208 area, um, there's some some good supply up there, and then up at, uh, what is it, 12, 1214, 1216, an even, even better area. So what, I'd watch for those two areas if you're looking for the big levels of supply. Obviously, if you look on the weekly chart, yeah, 1314, 1315 right there is, is looks really good. Um, if you look on the weekly chart of the S&P, obviously we're hitting that level this morning, uh, but just the just the real very bottom of it. But uh, yeah, you could get some real tradable shorts off that off that level. Okay, and uh, let's move forward here. So let's let's uh, we're going to stick to really big picture stuff today. Um, just go over larger time frames, and I thought instead of me just coming at you like I do often and just giving you the levels and saying here's the trade and all that, um, we'll do some of this together. Let's start with the U.S. dollar. Um, I could tell you that. Uh, let me let me just uh, get this chart up for you. So if you've been with us in FX Street for a while, um, you know we, we've we focused on this U.S. dollar chart often over the years. I think we've been doing this, uh, the FX Street stuff here for about uh, more than three years, believe it or not. It seems like just yesterday. I remember the first uh, first webinar, and this is like three, four years later. Amazing. And, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, it's just great to have websites and companies like FX Street out there being able to kind of put everybody together and uh, do great stuff. So. Very recently, and and uh, you know we we've come up to this supply level that you're looking at here in the U.S. dollar. If you remember back uh, back last year and the year before, we've we've been tra- we've had this level in here for quite a while at FX Street. We recently hit it again. We went over this last session, and now we're now we're declining. Okay, now now we're declining. So where is this decline likely to end? Um, we're going to go down to a smaller time frame to see that. And I think you'll see that we hit a level. Um, if we go down to a 60-minute chart, you're going to see we hit a level just today. But one thing I want to show you before we go to a different time frame in the big picture, the most important question is where, where is this thing going? Well, the key level that we have above is sitting right here. And this level is sitting just below another level. Uh, so this looks really good. Let me draw this in here, and then I'm going to share it with you. And I think it's really important that you have these levels on your charts as well. So uh, let me take the screenshot here. And there you go. So even though I would agree, I, some of you are probably thinking, well, this level is used up. There, ha- there can't be any supply left. We've traded all the way through this level. I agree. Okay. Uh, but now we need, to, we need to reach a price level where demand exceeds supply to, to kick off uh, another rally, uh, which, I, which I think will happen. But when price reaches this 8250 in the US dollar uh i would expect a uh, a decline you know a pretty significant decline from there to to wherever the the nearest demand is going to be at that point okay but you know you're going to have at least you know a, a, a point and a half uh, maybe two full two full points at a minimum uh, of uh, downside room from here okay so this is the next fresh supply level this is, I should say, this is the current fresh supply level above current price now in the dollar. And uh, may not seem like a big deal, but this is the first time, uh, given, given that we just traded all the way to the top of this level here, this is the first time in uh, about a year and a half that we can say we have a new fresh supply level in the larger time frames in the U.S. dollar. Okay. We've done very well trading off this level, um, but I would argue that it's done. We've already traded all the way through. The logic behind that for new members is that the, the, the sell orders or supply that was in this level uh, simply can't be there anymore if we traded all the way to the top and through that level. If there, if there were still a, signif- you know, a significant amount of sell orders up here, uh, <clears throat> you know, we wouldn't have been able to trade all the way to the top of that level. Okay, 
All right, so um, here's the next uh, supply level above, 82.50. It starts at 82.50. So now, let's, uh, to, to find demand below, you know, the obvious level is sitting just above 78. But I want to share something with you. Um, we were able to take a short position this morning, uh, just, a, just a small time frame short in the equity index future, specifically the NASDAQ this morning. And I will tell you, you know, this may sound a little crazy, but the main thing for the main thing for me with that uh, Nasdaq short from this morning, okay, was that the dollar hit this little demand level. If you remember our last session, FX3, we were looking at this level. I'm down to a 60-minute chart right here. Bashir, I see you're with us today. I'd be very surprised if you didn't have this level. Bashir is one of our uh, really good Excel team members in the uh, Forex Trading Room and Online Trading Academy. So hitting the, the uh, hitting this demand level in the U.S. dollar at the same time the S&P was hitting that 1208, set up a, a, a pretty simple short-term short in the uh, uh, that we uh, took in the Nasdaq Futures and Online Trading Academy. Make sense? Okay. Uh, Jake, when you say quite a long level, you mean how much time price spent at the level there? And if that's what you're saying, I would kind of agree with you. And I'd also say this is a fairly ugly level. There's, there's nothing that pretty about this level. Uh, also, we now have a pocket of supply sitting just above. In fact, we've I would argue that we kind of have two levels sitting on top of each other. There's one. Blow this up a little bit. And while this area is very ugly here, um, there's a lot of congestion in here, kind of right in here. If you look at that area, when you, when you come down to a smaller time frame, you'll see it, it uh, you know, it, it looks pretty good. A lot of tight congestion of trading in there, and um, and then we drop suggesting supply sees demand. So none of these are fantastic levels structure-wise, but... Um, they should they should do their thing. Remember, odds enhancer number one, this demand level had it. How did prices leave the level? Big, strong move out of that area, okay? Yeah, uh, Vishal, I, I, I agree with you. Um, the four-hour and eight-hour, you know, you really clean these levels up, okay? So you might want to try that. Okay, um, so watch for that. So when the U.S. dollar comes up into here, right, it, it should fall back down uh, into the demand, right, which means the uh, equity index markets should get uh, potentially get a nice push up once the dollar reaches supply, and we've watched the euro there as well. So we're still pretty larger time frame here, and, and I think that's all with the U.S. dollar. Okay, so in conclusion, while we have these two supply levels above and a new fresh supply level at 82.50 in the dollar, Okay, we, we've got some demand here, but the, the bigger demand is a bit lower. This is important information because when we get to the euro in a moment, um, let me just check something real quick here. Um, give me just a second here. Okay, I just want to check something there, uh, check a market. So let, let's, let's uh, move over to the euro. Uh, and I just want to reiterate, re reiterate one thing. The um, what is crucial for me is to always look at the U.S. dollar on a daily chart, and something smaller like an hourly or maybe four-hour chart is probably even better. Okay, before making, uh, you know, I would never take a trade just in the S&P or the Nasdaq or FESX or the DAX or the Nikkei or the Hang Seng. I would never take a trade in any of those equity index markets without looking at the U.S. dollar, okay? A lot of people say that, and, and what you're looking for is when they are both hitting opposing supply and demand levels at the same time. Very important information there. The only next step is make sure you understand how to properly identify real supply and demand, not just pivot highs and pivot lows, okay? All right, let's take a look at the euro. So this is a chart I had set up for you, and you know, unfortunately, the level hit just a little bit ago. I was hoping it wouldn't hit until our session, 
but uh, I can't control the timing of, of when these hit, unfortunately. Um, here we go. I guess anybody that could would have all the world's money. But anyway, we're on a 180-minute chart. It's a fairly large time frame. This is kind of the, a nice X-ray snapshot into a daily chart. Why look at the 180 or, or, or something like that? Because this supply level here, I would never be able to uh, identify that just looking at a daily chart. Now, uh, we also had this level uh, back at our last FX Street session, and I saw someone made a comment, well, what if prices don't get there? Don't worry about that if you're, if you're new to it, okay? Yeah, so trader, you're in this trade. Yeah, we had this last time, and, you know, prices always come to these levels. They have to. That's where the banks, dealer desks, big, big institutions have their orders. That's what, that's what that represents, okay? Um, yeah, so the demand below traders, this, this is definitely going to be an issue. Um, is it possible that the prices trade through this level? It, it is possible, but very unlikely. Okay, um, so I would, uh, if you're looking to take some profits, I would look to take profits not at the level, which starts at about 128, call it 65, but I would look to take profits uh, a few pips above that. Make sense? Okay. Okay, so if you're short 129.08, if you're short 129.08, you know, again, I'd be, I'd be careful just because the entry is a little bit late. Not, nothing, you know, it's okay. You just have to be aware of that and understand that, you know, it kind of throws off the risk reward a little bit. But great job there, T Law. Okay. All right. So um, there we go. All right. So watch this demand level below. Now, which one of these is likely to work out? You know, in other words, is the supply going to get traded through first, or the demand going to get traded through first? Quick little lesson here on that. What what uh, what you want to look for is how deep does price penetrate into the level itself. So we already have evidence on the supply side. We see that price barely touched the level and collapsed. Now now what happened? You know what was happening the same time the euro was hitting supply, the dollar was hitting that demand level. Okay. So what we want to see next is how deep does price go into this demand level? If price goes you know, fairly deep, maybe halfway into this level on the first retracement, then the, the conclusion is that there's more supply above here than there is demand here, and price is going to continue, continue lower. Okay. And even though that hasn't happened yet, I, I, I see that as the likely scenario. The reason why is because, let's cruise over here to this weekly chart. Paul, be careful giving too much weight on a wick on any given one time frame because that wick is there only because of the time frame you're looking at. So um, you want to always, I, I think you always want to take an x-ray snapshot and, you know, when you, when you see something that stands out to you as far as a level, a supply demand level on, on a, say, a daily chart, I would always go down a time frame or two and kind of take an x-ray snapshot. But what you're really looking for there is to identify where the majority of majority of trading activity took place, and more importantly, where where you know where in that level could trading not take place, right? It may not make sense. That may sound very subtle and not important, but that's probably the most important thing that we've talked about yet. You know, everybody and every book out there always talks and focus has you focusing on where all the candles are, where the candle bodies are, and where where um. You know, just where did all the trading activity take place? There's market profile and all these other things that just focus on where the congestion of trading is and all the heavy trading took place. But if you think about it, the real in supply demand imbalance is always where trading could not take place. So that that's what we focus on. Think of think of the odds enhancer we uh, that talked about that we talked about. You know, how much time to price spend at the level. That's why levels that are so tiny work out so well. Um, those of you that have been with us for a few years, um, let me let me point your eye to something. Okay, right here. I have not touched this chart. This daily chart of the of the dollar and people in here, I'm sure, have been with us for a while. Will will attest to this. The only change I made to this chart in a year and a half is today, just drawing in this fresh supply level. Other than that, these these other levels we've identified here, I have not touched this. This chart in a year and a half. 
and we've had some huge, probably some the, the biggest moves in the markets over the past uh, three years have come off these levels. But take a look at this level here, okay? To us, this is a great level. Why? Because there's hardly any trading activity there. Because hardly anything happened there, right? A little bit of trading and then a collapse in price. So what I'm getting at is the uh, – Remember, there's a reason why, let me just say it like this. There's a reason why there's so much white space in certain areas on a chart. It's because prices could not trade there because there's an overwhelming amount of supply and demand there. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's move on here. Sorry about that little rant. Um, it's just such an important point that, that average, the average person doesn't even consider until you, you point it out to them. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it can really help you. So um, take a look right here. So this is the weekly chart. So, so what we were getting at here was, you know, why is, you know, which, which level is going to work out here in the euro? Which is going to hold for the bigger move, right? Price is not just going to trade between these two levels forever. One's going to give way. Which one is going to be first? Well, the, uh, like we said, the, the first thing you want to look at is, how deep did price, are prices going to trade into the supply level? How deep are prices going to trade into the demand level? Whichever one goes deeper, that's the, um, you know, that's the one that's, that's very likely to give way first. Um, now, the argument on the downside is this. If we come to the weekly time frame, again, here's a demand level we've been trading off of for, again, about a year and a half. Now we're deeper into that level. So I would argue that there's probably not a ton of demand left here. Furthermore, on this time frame and the daily, we've now got this little area here and this little area here sitting above. What do we have below this level? Not much, okay? So if you're comparing, in other words, uh, another way to say this, let me do it this way. Because remember, we're talking, the kind of the theme today is where are these currency markets going big picture? And once we do this kind of this logical analysis on, on fo you know, focusing on where the real buyers and sellers are in a market, um, we can, we can, you know, plan out our trades. So given that you've got, you know, these areas above, and I'm just kind of drawing these areas in. These are not planned out levels, actionable levels. We will, we'll take, we'll go inside to smaller time frames to do that. You don't, there's no reason to take on this much risk. But given that we've got this stuff above, and given that we have, you know, nothing below right here, okay, so here's current price. We've got this stuff above and not a whole lot below, right? Make, make sense? Okay. Yeah, and Al's pointing out that the euro from those levels lines up with the S&P, SP dropping as well, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, again, there, there's not a whole lot in here to stop prices from falling, at least on this time frame. Yeah, are there, are there levels when we go down to a 60-minute and smaller? Tons of them. But we're talking big picture moves here. So given that we've got, you know, um, this was a strong, solid floor, but kind of the hammer came down here pretty hard, came down here again and, and put a bigger hole in this floor, and, and, in fact, pretty much came all the way through it. So now that we've got a couple fresh areas above and really nothing below, you know, the path of least resistance for price over the long term is still probably lower. Does that make sense? Yeah, Andrea, exactly. And, and be, I agree with you. And because of that, that, that that's a hint is where prices are likely to go next, right? Okay. So if prices were, are to, so if this, if this is actually able to, uh, play out, you know, the way that the chart is suggesting here in the big picture, that means the dollar should have room to rally, right? And I know we already talked about this, but let's just revisit that chart for a moment just to kind of put this whole puzzle together. That means that the dollar should have room to rally. Well, in the small time frames, there's certainly congestion above. But remember, when we go to this daily, Okay. Our fresh area of supply is not till about 82.50. Okay. Not till about 82.50. I'd like to have some stronger demand here, but 
uh, in the dollar, but the, you know it's just not not showing up 100% yet. Smaller time frames, yes, but there's really not a whole lot to stop prices from rallying up to 82.50 in the dollar. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, I think we're good there. See a couple, one, one or two people have issues with sound. Um, sound looks good here. All right, um, we can move on to a different market. Okay. Uh, is this being recorded, Joe? I, I honestly don't know. Um, okay, so uh, next market. Why don't we go to the pound? We always kind of get to the pound last, and and uh, most of the time never get to it, hardly get to it. Let's take a look at the pound. Okay. So we, I think we're, I think we've talked the U.S. dollar uh, enough there. Next, let me put this chart on a 60-minute chart. You'll notice too, for for the past few years, uh, doing all these FX street sessions, the one chart that does not change, you know, all these charts change when I click over to a different market, but this chart in the upper left corner is always the U.S. dollar. That's because anything I'm trading, equity index futures currencies, energies and metals, whatever I'm looking at, you know, this, this dollar has a big impact. It's not like I'm a big fan of the U.S. dollar, believe me. I mean, I know I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen. I, I live in the States, but, uh, you know, that, that's not why I have the U.S. dollar up there. <clears throat> if, uh, anyway. Okay, let's, let's look at the pound. So the pound, uh, I want to go to this larger time frame very quickly. Uh, the, the pound is is a little tricky because you know we've got a big area of congestion just above, similar to the um, euro, okay, sitting right up here. Uh, but the pound, you know, and, and the pound has this kind of big pocket of nothing down here. But we have to investigate this. So it's very clear. Let me go down to a daily real quick. Yes, yeah, so this is a good example. We we need to be careful with. This is a this is a great example. I was just answering an email on this topic uh, before. So you see how it looks like we have this really nice supply level sitting just above, okay? Which which you know can easily cause prices to turn lower. When you go down to a daily chart, you're going to see that you know what this what this thing really looks like. Watch this. Again, another big piece of the puzzle here. So here's the daily chart. This is that whole big supply area. But really, you know, here's the drop base drop level. These are all pullbacks into that level. Okay, does everybody see that? You know, having said that, in this area, it, you know, it looks like there's still plenty of supply up there. So, um, but when we look at what's to the left and lower, let's just take a quick look at that. So there's what we have below current price. Uh, now we can go back to the weekly and map all this out. Uh, one more thing here. Okay. So let's put. Uh, I'm going to put our. I'm going to put our lines uh, right in here for the area. Again, just to identify the area. Okay, so we've we've got some supply sitting just above, and then sitting just below current price, we, we've got a little pocket of something here, but then nothing below. So because we've been back to this area a few times, again, same thing in this market, the path of, path of least resistance appears to be lower. Okay, path of least resistance appears to be lower. Um, I want to show you one more market that is actually kind of hitting a, a level right now today. Um, let me share it with you. Actually, I can, I can cruise over here to this. Uh, give me just a second here. I'm pulling the chart up. Well, let me do this. This will be easier. All right, let me just capture the chart. I have this mapped out on another screen, but I think that'll just take too long. 
Take a look at the S&P, which uh, you know we, most of us know how the equity index markets work with the uh, currencies. So if we take the if we take this level right here at Online Trading Academy, we've been watching this level very carefully and waiting for prices to hit that. So there you go. So, so today. The S&P is trading right into that level on the weekly time frame. It's also pretty clear on the daily. Now notice it's gapping into that level. So for those of us that are in the trading room at Online Trading Academy, what type of gap do we call this? This is a very significant gap for us. What's this gap called? I, I think we have some uh, Online Trading Academy extended XLT members with us. Yeah, novice gap. Exactly. So a novice gap, this is uh, probably one of the favorite high probability setups there is uh, that, that we look for. A novice gap is a gap in price after a move in price in, this, in the same direction as that move. So here we have a gap up in price after a rally in price. When that gap is into a supply level or a demand level, uh, odds are the price is going to turn in the other direction. Okay, think about it. Only, you know, people who lose money trading in any market always make two mistakes. They buy after a rally in price, and they buy into a price level where supply exceeds demand. Or they sell after a drop in price and into a price level where demand exceeds supply. Only a novice trader would do that. A consistently profitable trader would never take that action. They couldn't. They wouldn't be consistently profitable according to the laws of supply and demand. So if we recognize that novice retail money is buying into this market, we, um, we want to be the seller. Okay? Another way to say that, another way to say that, this is, this is the S&P, biggest equity index market in the world. Okay? Um, let me put it to you this way. How many people would how many people would like to know where the uh, the, where the the banks and and uh, where, the, where the big banks have their buy and sell orders in the currency markets? Or how would you like to know where big institutions like Goldman Sachs have their buy and sell orders for for the S and P? Anybody like to know that? Right. Of course, we'd all like to know that. Well, everybody thinks it's impossible. It's not. Okay, let me let me show you how you how you do it. Ready? Um, here's here's a way to think about it. So here's the S and P, biggest equity index market in the world. We'll do this on the S and P, and then we'll do it on a, on a on a on a uh, currency market. We can do it on any market you want. So does anybody with us here today in our group have an account size that can cause a supply level like this on a weekly chart in the S and P? You know, look at this huge drop in price on the weekly. Anybody with us here today have an account size that could cause a supply level like this in the S&P? And if you do, go ahead and tell us, you know, tell us you do. We'll congratulate you. We'll throw a big, we'll be happy for you, believe me. Okay. All right. Makes sense, right? Probably not. And, yeah, I don't either. But, uh, so here's the question, okay? Here's the question. If it's not our supply that's causing this, whose supply is it? Make sense? Okay. All right. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. If you look at the euro, it's the same thing. Uh, let me just pull up the euro real quick. Here we go. Kind of get a little off topic, but I, I just think it's so important. Um, here's the supply level that we pointed out our, and during our last FX Street session when price is way down here. Okay, so somewhere, I think it was over here actually. Um, now price reached this level and declined. Again, does anybody with us have an account size that could cause a supply level like this in the euro? Okay, probably not. So if it's not our supply, whose supply is it? This is where banks and institutions and governments uh, are selling euros. They're selling at other price points, but here's a significant one. Okay, make sense? So, once, so, so the goal is to learn where 
and what do you and, and the truth is what do you know who's buying or selling i'm saying specifically it doesn't matter what do you know it's a bank or an individual it, it really 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 doesn't matter but the key is just identifying the price levels where willing supply exceeds willing demand or willing demand exceeds willing supply now yes at those levels it's it's the big institutions and banks that overwhelmingly you know have the overwhelmingly large orders okay so it's just another way to think about the same thing that we always talk about. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's move on. Not a whole lot to change there. So given that the S and P has hit that supply today, at the same time the dollar hit that little demand. Okay, is a pretty uh, you know pretty predictable little turn here. Uh, but keep those things in mind. So we've got some big picture things in play here. We've got the euro hitting some supply at the same time. The uh, the S and P is hitting some supply, and and then the, the dollar hitting a little bit of demand. But again, just below, just above current price in the dollar, we've got a couple. We have a couple pockets of of uh, supply, right? And Again, uh, the, oh, these supply levels right here, by the way, are going to line up with this demand level here in euro. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, you probably, good question there from um, from Brad. Would you buy off this demand level in the euro? Um, the, the, yeah, I, I, I probably would because, but what I would look for first, Brad, see where the dollar is. If the dollar is into one of these levels, specifically the upper one, yeah, I, I, I'd be surprised if you didn't get a nice bounce here. And you don't have to take the trade off the 180-minute chart. Okay, you can come down to a smaller time frame, like this 60-minute chart here. And let's see, 128. What is it about 128.70? I'm sorry, 128.65. So. You know, you can tighten up that level. And uh, you can tighten up that level. You can go to the bottom bottom portion of that level. You know, you don't need to take this giant stop here. If you come down to the 60 minute, here's that here's that level right here. Okay. So you could probably tighten it up to you know about uh, 20 ticks, 20 pips. Okay, by 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 going here. Well, Sindhu, that's what I'm saying. So if if you you know just because the area is obvious on the 180 minute chart, you can tighten up that level by folk, by taking an X-ray snapshot and going down to the 60 minute, and you you can risk maybe I don't know 20 pips down here <clears throat> for potentially you know at least twice that if not more on the upside. Okay, but make sure that the dollar is into one of these supply levels first. Okay. All right, and and we want to see how deep price penetrates into this level. Again, big picture, there's probably more room on the downside than there is on the upside over the next few weeks. Uh, let's go to to another market. Let's go to the euro yen. Uh, New Zealand dollar. We could do that. Oops. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's look at a market we don't we don't look at too often. I always want to get to all these other markets, but uh, there's you know there's there's never time. <clears throat> yeah. So FX uh, magnet, good question there. Uh, but I, I'll take that one step further. If there was not a DVD there, you wouldn't have those pivot highs. Makes sense. Okay. Go with the DVD first, but take take the pivot highs and lows when there's a strong move away, and it's really the first time into and those a pivot high and lows is really is the first time into a key level. Okay. Yeah, Boyke, the the white lines are something I created uh, many years ago. They kind of, you know, I don't ever, I don't usually go over them or put them in, you know, manuals or anything. It's just a little. Little, little something that kind of helps me identify uh, where, where the meat is of a level. 
not a big deal. You don't need them, and you can do it without it. Um, yeah, uh, good question about the stop. You're always going to be better off on the other side of the DVD, uh, not the pivot. Okay, and if that's too big, just you know you can consider finding a different trade. All right, let's take a look at the uh, New Zealand dollar here versus the uh, USD. We come to the larger time frame. We see if we had a, a very big move in price. Oh, let me let me just snapshot of the charts here. There you go. Um, and I want to go down to the daily before we move on and map anything out. And let me take a picture of that for you. Okay, so here's a, a daily chart of uh, this market. You know, there's there's not a lot of you know really clean and clear levels on this time frame. Uh, obviously, this this supply level here produced a big drop, and we're we're getting you know kind of rallying back up there. But um, at this point, there appears to be you know you're making this stair step pattern on the upside. With, with really no clear supply above. So the, just the quick quick analysis here would tell us to, to keep buying pullbacks to the, the demand clusters below until we get close to the 82 mark. So let's go down a, a couple time frames and, and see what that looks like. I really, really wouldn't read too much deeper into it than that. Let me get another time frame up here that I see a few people are mentioning it's, it's a really key time frame. I'm going to pull it up here. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to spend a ton of time on this market. Um, the one level I would really focus on below current price, I would go below that big cluster there and focus on this right here as the next uh, buying point. I see we already have had a pullback to it, and that's okay. Um, the, the, yeah, the only two levels below current price, and they're so far from current price. I'm not going to spend much time on this one. Are really down here. These are these are the fresh levels. There's a big difference between a key supply and demand level and a conventional support and resistance level. Almost, you know, incredibly different. Um, there's also a big difference between just a pivot high or pivot low and a key fresh supply and demand level. Seventy-nine fifty. I, I see that, uh, Sindhu. You know what? Here, here's why I didn't pull out this. Like, why not put a level right here? I would be uh, very confident you're, you're going to get a bounce from the 79.50. But the two things that stopped me from putting in a, a level there, number one, there was way too much three things, okay? Three reasons why I would not call this a, a level that's worth taking. I would expect a bounce from here, you know, in the future, but, uh, but I wouldn't take it for three reasons. Number one, too much time spent here. There was way too much trading here. Look at the time frame, 240-minute chart. Tons of trading here. The logic behind that, if supply and demand is so out of balance at that level, why was price able to spend so much time there? See what I'm saying? In other words, if supply and demand was so out of balance here, which means it's a great level, price would never have been able to spend that much, spend that much time there. Number two, if there was an overwhelming amount of demand in this level, okay, if there was an overwhelming amount of demand in this level, why did we have this wick to the downside here? In other words, think of the trade desk. Close your eyes and picture a trading desk like I was on at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and picture stacks of buy and sell orders. If there's really a giant stack of buy orders here that did not get filled, which means, you know, which equals demand, how is it possible that price was able to trade down to here? In other words, if you have a stack of buy orders sitting right here at 79.50, it is not possible that you're going to be able to trade down to here. It's physically impossible. In other words, you can't be trading down here at the same time you have a bunch of willing buyers up here. They'd all be filled. 
Make sense? Okay. Now, Boyke, when you say false candle move, just so I'm clear, are you saying like kind of like a fake out or something, or or that candle's not real? Because because if my if I have bad data here, that's that's a different that's a different story. I don't like like incorrect data. Yeah, so if you don't have this wick on your chart, then maybe maybe I've got bad data here. So if that's if that's the case, that's that's a different story then. Okay, but uh, anyway, so in number three, okay, okay, okay. So if the candle's correct, and that's a big red flag. In other words, there can't be a ton of willing buyers here if price was able to dip down to here in the middle of this level. It's not possible. Um, number three, if we call this. I'm just going to put a couple lines in for the demand. If we call this a demand, let, let's say that those first two things that I just talked about didn't exist, and this was a good level. The other problem, if prices drop from where they are now to this demand level, you're going to be left with a supply level sitting just above. That kind of kills the risk-reward. Make sense? Even if this is a perfect level, so this is point number three, even if this is a perfect level, if prices drop from right here to here, this is going to be a perfect supply level to short against. So those are the three reasons why I would not be a very interested buyer at 79.50. And I know you might be saying, well, it's going to, you know, your demand level so far from current price. I agree. That's why to, you know, put the levels in, file it away, and, and come back to another time. There's plenty of short-term trading opportunities in this market. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, let's uh let's let's check that market out. Yeah, Glenn, um those are those are good levels to use when they're in the right location on the larger time frame supply demand curve. They're gonna be better than pivot. Okay? Remember, pivot highs and lows are just pullbacks into fresh levels in the first place. Okay, that's a, it sounds like a minor point, but that's that's uh as Bashir will tell you, that's everything. Okay. Uh, let me take a quick look here. And let me take you to uh, another market here. Just a, just a moment. So someone pointed out this market. Let's just take a quick look. Pound yen. Okay, we've had a nice move. Again, you, you see how price just went right through this level right here? This is exactly what I was talking about. Wow. Yeah, just way too much trading here. And look, prices are trading here and then they rise. That's not the picture of supply. You see what I'm saying? Way too much, way too much trading in here. Um, number one, and e again, even if this was a good level, there's a demand level, a really pr a perfect demand level sitting just below. Not only does that tell you that you have no risk reward shorting here, but it tells you don't take this trade. There's lots of pent up demand sitting just below. However, prices dropped here, a little bit of congestion and then, and then another drop. So this is a level I would consider shorting against right here. And I would take uh, just the just the meat of it up here. Okay, I suppose if you wanted to, you could bring it down here. But the reason why I'm putting my lower line right there, uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's the origin of the drop. Remember, you might say, well, why not put your line here under these two candles? Because the origin of the drop is really from right up here. That's where the supply is. That's where that, again, think of those buy and sell orders. You know, that's how I learned to do this, by having those orders in front of me. And you see exactly where, exactly the price, the exact price point where the imbalance is, and that's where prices tick off from. So you've got that there, and you've got, Again, look at this level here. I could put my, my box and lines right there, but really the rally, you know, went from right there. That's where the meat is. Okay. That line, that line, then I'll capture the chart again. Um, you know, I'm not really sure if you're seeing me put in these lines, so I keep, I keep uh, refreshing the chart. I don't even know if I have to do that. Okay, um, so let's watch for these two levels in the pound 
yen. And give me a second here. So I just typed my email address into the chat, fsiden at tradingacademy.com. Oops, there it is again. Uh, dot com, no, not, uh, not the end. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there we go. So I, I captured the chart again. Um, so wa watch for watch for these levels. We spent a lot of time on the dollar and the euro. I, I think those are those are key. Um, I think we, we planned out that the next you know the next uh, uh, at least couple weeks or so, uh, and we've got another FX street coming up either next week or the week after. Yeah, this session was recorded. And there's my email again. If you have any questions or comments. You can always send them to fsiden at tradingacademy.com. Thanks for your time, everybody. And most importantly, uh, thanks for your, uh, you know, we uh, totally um, appreciate the, the trust you have in, in us uh, kind of guiding you through, you know, your education and, uh, and, and markets and, and some of the trades that you take. Believe me, that you take that responsibility uh, as an enormous responsibility. So have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Thanks again.